Entrepreneurs and minimalists have a few things in common. They desire purpose, they're pursuing their passion, and they're inspired to create freedom in their lives. Now, imagine coupling that entrepreneurial spirit with a minimalist mindset. What you get is a business model that's not just about revenue. It's about keeping more of what makes you happy in your business and eliminating the rest. I have personally enjoyed having a minimalist business. It's given me time and spaciousness to live my life because it's grounded in simplicity and I'm intentional about how I want to grow. So if having time and a better quality of life is an important metric of how you measure success as a business owner, you want to keep watching this video because I'm going to be sharing the three rules of a minimalist business so that you can start creating a simplified business that gives you time to enjoy your life. If we haven't met, I am Lydia Lee from Screw the Cubicle. In the last decade, I have been coaching purpose-driven folks to transition out of their nine to five to build a meaningful business that aligns with the lifestyles that they want. Now, as a practicing minimalist, I've also been incorporating the concepts of minimalism into how I run my business. This has allowed me to live and work globally every single year while maintaining a profitable business that lets me work an average of about 20 to 25 hours a week. I share a lot about solopreneurship strategies and lifestyle first business tips on this channel. So if that piques your interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell button to be the first to know when a new video drops. One of the quotes I really love sharing that I think really encompasses the value of a minimalist business and the benefits of running a minimalist business comes from author Paul Jarvis, who wrote Company of One, one of my favorite books. He says, running a minimalist business doesn't mean staying small for the sake of being small. It means staying small when it makes sense to be small and only growing in areas where growth provides value to you and your customers. Growth isn't inherently evil, but it comes at a price. And running a minimalist business is more about creating freedom than profits. So one of the first things I want to talk about, which is rule number one of a minimalist business, is about streamlining your offers because this is the part of a business model that really takes up a lot of energy, time, and investment um, to be able to grow, right? As part of your business. And offers is what you offer, right? To charge when you work with clients, different types of packages, um, offerings that you have on the table is also what I consider how you market, right? What are you putting out there as an offer, whether it's like a little intro thing, right? In social media or on YouTube that you're watching me here now, right? Those are offerings that you have on the table for your business, for people to find you and to work with you. So streamlining my offers has really, really been such a game changer for me to enjoy my business and be simplified in how I offer my expertise. And that doesn't mean that I only do um, a very small boundary of things. Sometimes, sometimes I do, but most of the time is actually what it is is a, is a is a master framework, right? That I use that I masterfully invest in in terms of doing better in it and doing that one journey really really well for my clients, right? So this concept of doing one thing well instead of offering all the things under the moon, um, I think can really bring more ease and calm into the way that you profit and create revenue for your business. So. If you have heard some of my videos on this channel, you've heard me talk about having a signature framework, right? Which is a map for how you begin and end with a client. And what is the journey and experience you want to take clients on that is the thing that you specialize in? It's the thing you're known for. It is your unique value proposition in how you solve a problem for the marketplace that you are playing in, right? So this master signature framework is your one key offer, right? That can be packaged into what I call your main course, right? Uh, for me at this moment in time, it's my 90 day launch academy program, which people can do with me as a student group format or the exact same framework in a premium VIP one-to-one -one op option. So you can see just by simplifying, like everyone does the same framework, you can do it in two different formats, but that's really what's on offer. And it's very easy and simple to sell. You can also consider um, creating smaller entry offers, what I call your appetizers to your main offer. 
So sometimes, um, you know, you may have an offer, your signature offer may be a high price premium offer. And for people to check you out and be investing a small amount to taste test in a way your services, it also is a good idea to offer an appetizer intro offer that is still part of your framework, still part of this master framework you offer, but it might be step one, right, of your master framework. So I've done this before in courses like Idea to Income, which really helps people with phase one of the journey. I also do it uh, in something new I'm running right now called the walk and talk sessions where people coach with me while we take a walk together virtually. That helps them to remove a barrier of an obstacle. Maybe it's something they're thinking about leaving corporate, not quite sure about their fears, not quite sure how to begin, right? That kind of solves a small problem so that it opens up the door for potentially them being interested in my main course, which is my main core offer, right? So you can still have more than one offering, but it has a thread that binds them together, right? There is, it's not a bunch of different things at different starting points um, that makes it complicated to sell. Now, the other thing about streamlining your offers, as I mentioned, is marketing. Marketing multiple offers is not easy. Having multiple launches a year isn't easy. I don't, for example, um, do the launch thing anymore for the last several years. I sort of have an open, you know, all year round sort of um, model, right, that people can enroll if there's space. But it's something that I consistently market through my monthly newsletters. And it's part of, you know, it's not this huge offering or this huge launch that happens a few times a year that can bombard my audience in their inbox. So in order for me to maintain a sustainable way of marketing, right, all my offers, I suggest using a more mindful marketing approach where instead of being everywhere, right, on the online world, on every social platform, on every marketing strategy that you can think of, is actually picking one to two marketing channels that is best suited for the way you want to communicate, the platforms you actually enjoy making content on, and then keeping really consistent in making content for those platforms so that it becomes the place you master again, right? So most people find me from my YouTube channel. This is sort of my, you know, sort of more general marketing platform that I believe brings me the most return on my investment of time. It's also the best channel for me because I enjoy making videos. So that ticks the box and people really get to have a little taster about what it feels like to work with me. So if you are currently thinking about streamlining your offers, I want you to think about how you can come up with one core offer and make a little appetizer offer, intro offer to that core offer. And then I also want you to think about how you can minimize your marketing efforts by being more mindful in your marketing and picking one to two channels that best align with your strengths, your way of communication, and the way that you want to build relationships in the online world. And my second rule for a minimalist business is to simplify and automate everything. And that means using technology to your advantage and knowing which sorts of technologies to use based on what you need for your business, right? Which comes back to, again, the simplification bit, right? If you're not everywhere on social media, you're not offering 101 things, your business model becomes a lot more manageable, right? And you can be more effective in what you intentionally choose, right? To give away, to work on every single month recurringly in your business that really makes sense for the outcomes that you want for your business. Instead of just being busy or being, you know, famous on social media, right? You're really just targeting activities that really make sense for bringing in the kind of clients you want and the, the, the format and how you want to keep in touch, right, with your audience. So creating a system and a schedule, right, for recurring priority tasks in your business will be really important. But most importantly is choosing the right activities, right? And again, this comes back to the tip I gave you on the last point, which is to pick activities that align with your genius zone, aligns with your strengths, right? That gives you a metric to measure, right? What is going to be enjoyable for me? What's going to be meaningful for me? And what is going to be productive for the strengths that I have to my resources at the moment? Now, for me, I'm a video girl. I do a lot of video, right? When it comes to content production, which I can automate. Right, I can film the video and then automate a process of how my video editor might edit these videos so that 
once I filmed it, that's my role for that marketing activity. I don't no longer edit. I no longer do all the publishing or things like that, even though I know how to do it. It's not the best use of my time. It's not what I get paid to do, right? In my best genius zone. So choosing what are the right marketing activities and how you want to communicate is going to be important because marketing takes up a lot of time in a business and being able to simplify and automate is going to make your life a lot more eas easier, right? To manage. So think about what it is that you love doing that you know you could create a system around. If you're sort of starting from scratch every single time, that's what's not going to give you a minimalist approach to business. It means that you're going to have to constantly um, wrap your brain on, right? What are the steps to do? What do I do next? And But if you have templates and you have a schedule, you have an alarm that might even go off where you batch film your videos. This is what I'm doing today. I'm batch filming all my videos for the month so that I don't have to do my hair again. <laughs> <laughs> every single week, right? Um, so that allows me to be in the mode, right? Of filming, creating content. Once it's done, it's done. And it goes through a system that goes to my video editor. And then he knows what to do with it ongoing for the rest of the month. Now, I know that choosing tools are not always an easy process because there's so many tools out there for so many things. So one of the shortcut routes I'm going to give you today is a link to my Notion dashboard, which is for my online business toolkit that I use to run my entire business without a big team and with ease and effectiveness. I'm going to give you the link on the description as well. I'm going to see if I put it in the cards as well so that you can easily click to it to see how I run my business with tools that really matter to me and access to support systems of specialists and contractors and freelancers that do certain things in my business for me that I can outsource and not to do it myself. Okay, take a look at it. There's some free tools there. There's some tools that have minimal investment, uh, whatever it might be. Um, I, I break down for you what I use each tool for and what is most valuable about each tool, right? So take a gander on if that might maybe help you with some of your online business toolkits so that you can do less of the manual labor when it comes to sustaining and maintaining your business. Um, the the other important thing to think about when it comes to simplifying, automating everything is to be able to curate a lean team of experts. Now, in Paul Jarvis's Company of One book, he talks a lot about, you know, um, not wanting to manage people and not wanting to pay full time salaries all the time. And I'm in the same boat. I love working with people, don't really love managing people. So what I've really decided on in the last few years is to actually invest my money for a team according to project basis contract work, where I need some someone specific, someone specialized in an area of work that I know I can pay top dollar for, but it gets done and I don't have to train, I don't have to manage, they're not junior people, they're people that are very senior level, right, skill sets in their work. And that really allows me to trust them. And that kind of um, approach really gives me good headspace to just do what I do best in my business and outsource important things in my business to someone else who can do it way better than me. Now, in that Notion board link that I gave you, there will be some um, links as well to support systems I've used in terms of VA, web designers, and graphic designers that have really supported my business and done those parts of my business really well for me that you can also um, be you know, building relationships with if that's those are the people that you need in your business as well. Um, but if you too need help in your business, but aren't interested in having a full time staff to have meetings and all the things that, to be honest, really bore me and take me away from living my lifestyle, this might be a way to go right curate a lean team of experts of freelancers contractors on a project basis, decide what are the things that are most recurring in your business, and then look at ways to outsource, simplify and automate things through technology. Now that brings me nicely to the final and third rule of a minimalist business, a rule that I think actually is one of the most important rules uh, of all the rules, which is to clarify what success means to you personally. Now, this is a, a, a piece that I know I missed when I first launched my business, when I you know, looked at what other people were creating in the marketplace, look at other coaching practices and um, leaders in the in the workplace and really didn't question, you know, what was my own definition of happiness and success and what do, how do I want my business to give back 
to the life I wanted to lead. All I was really focusing on in the beginning of time was just making the most money, right? And then I did. And guess what? That didn't bring me any more fulfillment and joy and purpose into my life. Now, I love making money, but I also love other values in my life, like time and my lifestyle choices and travel and working minimal hours and being able to enjoy working with clients I actually love instead of a big mass stadium of an audience, right? I'm what I call a cozy business, an intimate boutique brand that I love keeping small, tiny but mighty, right? And that's more my design of what makes me me, right, in my life. But I didn't go ahead and do that in the beginning of time. And I had to learn the hard way of going through another burnout in my business and having to recalibrate and rebuild again. So if you're starting out in your business journey at the moment, or even if you're seasoned, a seasoned business owner listening to this video, now is the perfect time, right? To really think about and reflect on what is that, that metric of success that you want to measure your business against, instead of looking at what is successful out there. When you look at the outside world, people will tell you a million dollar business is the way to go or a quarter million dollar business or a hundred K business is there'll be all these numbers out there. And it's confusing because all of them make sense that, yeah, that, that seems like a good number, but we need to do the math, right? We need to understand what our life, what our lives particularly will cost. What is the right enough number for our financial fulfillment, right? That should be personal to us and be able to change that or shift that or maintain it you know, however we see fit. Some people want to make 100K a year for the rest of their lives and work 20 hours a week or less, right? Some people want to just be in their cabin to write a book and work 10 hours a week, right? And be able to sustain that lifestyle, whatever that may cost. So really pricing out, right? What your lifestyle that you desire really costs like, simplifying and, you know, even minimizing expenses so that you have a comfortable number to reach for, in your business, right? That's going to allow you to know when, when do you have enough clients? When do you have enough money so that there's not this temptation to constantly strive for bigger is better and more is better because that may not be the case. Okay. So make decisions for what fits the business model that you want and the lifestyle that you want to lead. Know your enough number and what's that balance for how you value revenue and money and time for other aspects of your life, right? Even sometimes planning out an ideal schedule for yourself of when you want to work. And, you know, if you work in sprints versus needing breaks in between the day, things like that, or what you want to incorporate into your schedule when it comes to hobbies or wellness or time with family, all of that gets you closer when you get to the details of how you want your ideal day, your ideal schedule, your ideal enough revenue number to really look at. Okay. All right. So I hope you have enjoyed uh, watching this video and learning more about my three rules of a minimalist business. I would love to hear from you as well. What do you think I might have missed in this video? What would, you, how do you want to define a minimalist business or what of these three rules resonated with you the most? I would love for you to share that in the comments. And if you like this video, please share it with a friend that might appreciate watching it like the video so that more people can find this content and I can spread my work my work to a bigger global marketplace as well. And if you want to continue this journey of uh, learning with me, um, you might want to also check out my workshop called The Four Keys to Launch a Business You Love. Uh, you can go to screwthecubicle.com forward slash workshop or go into the links on the description of this video and you'll be able to join a 50 minute training where I go through how to um, really build a business aligned with your genius zone, how to build the foundations of a model of a business that's going to give you purpose and profit because we need both to feel meaningful in how we pursue our careers. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.